Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is that you're joining me for this video. Thanks once again for clicking on the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review channel. The subject of today's video is the Lamy 2000 Fountain Pen. Before I get started, let me remind you that episode 31 of the Pentertainment Podcast is available now. Join The Odd Oink and myself along with special guest Dr. SBRE Brown in talking about all kinds of stuff pen related, including insanity and Dr. Brown's creative process. It was a great episode and I hope you check it out. Just be forewarned, it's not for children. You have been warned. The Lamy brand has been around since the year 1930 in Germany. The original owner was a former employee of the Parker Pen Company. His name was Josef Lamy. Later on, the business was taken over by his son, Manfred Lamy, who ran the business until he retired in the year 2006, at which time the business was taken over by a Bernhard M. Rosna, and it is he who remains in charge to this day. Now, through the years, though times and trends have changed, the pen in question today, the Lamy 2000, has not changed in design since the year 1966. At the time, it was one of its kind due to the special fiberglass material they used in the pen. It was named Macrolon. The Lamy 2000 is currently the only piston-filled pen that the brand has and is a staple in the brand as well as collections of fountain pen enthusiasts around the globe. The Lamy 2000 is considered so iconic it is currently on display at the MoMA in New York City. This certainly gives the brand some bragging rights over other brands, and rightfully so, considering it's not every day a fountain pen, a writing instrument that is more often than not considered archaic in nature, finds itself in a museum not for its quality of antiquity, rather in a museum dedicated to modern art. It's like finding a beeper in an Apple store, no easy feat. And that is to the credit of the original designer, Gert Alfred Müller, Although there have been a couple of special editions that were released in recent times, one of which was blue and jacked the price up by about 300% just for being blue, I will be reviewing the standard black edition, widely available pretty much everywhere. That's all I have for the background information. Moving on to the neutral zone. Those elements about the pen that are neither good or bad, or can be good or bad, depending on you. The nib is an in-house made 14 karat gold nib that is similar to nibs found in other Lamy pens with how it holds onto the feed with its wings on the side. We simply cannot see it because it is partially hooded. The feed is again an in-house made feed and is also concealed by the stainless steel section. On the feed side of the section there is a small breather hole. This stainless steel section is brushed to conform with the look of the rest of the pen and has a Macrolon collar where the stainless steel ends. It's hard to see where that collar ends and the rest of the barrel begins. But one way to tell is by looking for these small little steel nubs poking out of the sides of the pen where the metal ends and the Macrolon begins. This is a small keyed ring that is between the section and the barrel responsible for the click that keeps the cap closed when capping. At the start of the barrel, just after the section, is a prison bar style ink window. The barrel has a bulging football shape that almost unnoticeably tapers past the blind cap to the blind cap's flat end. The end finial is a brush metal circle, very plain and very, you know, plain. Yep, I got good words. The cap is more of the same Macrolon with a tapering design down to the flat finial. The top of the finial is shiny. The finial is separated from the cap by a small recess and is actually a separate piece that is screwed into the cap, sandwiching in the clip in place. The clip is a spring-loaded clip with a squared off edge on every side and has a smoother brush finish than the steel finish found in the section. The clip tapers slightly to the tip. There is no center band on the cap, but at the rim of the cap is a very slight taper that is polished and shiny that adds a very subtle highlight to the separation of cap and barrel. The pen was packaged inside of a white cardboard box with one open end. Slide that off and you have a clear, stiff plastic box. Open that up and you have yet another box, this time cardboard, with the brand name in silver foil and made in Germany printed horizontally and vertically across the box a trillion times. Open this up and finally you have your pen in a plastic pen body bag resting loosely under a felt strap atop a felt bedding that reads, <laughs> can you believe it? Made in Germany in the event that in the time it took you to remove the lid, you forgot where this pen was made. In case you weren't aware, this pen was made in Germany. 
Under that bedding is a secret compartment with warranty information and instructions. That's all I have for the neutral zone. Moving on to the good. Those elements about the pen that are good. I've heard from time to time that this pen is known to have what's called a sweet spot. This means that if one were to rotate the pen ever so slightly in one direction or another, the writing experience would suffer. However, I have to admit that in my time with my Lamy 2000, I have yet to run into any such issue. The only thing I can say is that it writes very well. It's not a gusher in terms of wetness, but it is a wet writer. I have found that this nib allows inks with sheening and shading qualities to really strut their stuff. When it comes to the smoothness, it is pretty darn smooth. It glides across paper like a freshly peeled hard-boiled egg across a marble countertop right into your cat's food bowl. Yeah, it's that smooth. Isn't it funny how your cat always tries to eat your food up until it actually lands in their food bowl and then all of a sudden they have absolutely no interest whatsoever? They don't actually want your food. They just don't want you to have it. Anyway, I really do love the way this pen writes. It really has a writing experience that is its own. It's an in-house nib and really has its own identity. I love that it doesn't feel like a Yovo or Bach nib. Not that I don't love my Yovo and Bach nibs, it's just that I can use some change here and there. Especially when that change is a very well-functioning nib and awesome writing experience like this one is. I also notice a very slight amount of line variation when writing. I find that it's not coming from the nib flexing, rather from the nibs tipping. It's almost as though it has a slight stubbiness to it, and I really like it. Just be advised, as with other in-house German-made nibs such as Pelican, this nib being an extra fine writes with a line width equivalent to that of a Yovo medium. I haven't tried the Lamy medium or broads, but I can only imagine that they write with the line width of a blunt lipstick. With regard to the balance, I think that whether posted or not, it's very comfortable. I don't think I can even tell a difference between the two. Now, I prefer to unpost pens in general, so when I write with this pen, I usually leave it unposted. When it comes to the aesthetics of the pen, well, it's just a black pen. But at the same time, there is something very cool and artsy within its simplicity. It has a very industrial look about it, while at the same time looking streamlined and modern. I particularly like the design and the shape of the clip. It just looks modern and artsy. In my opinion, I find that the design of this pen was way ahead of its time. Had this pen never existed and had never been seen before and only just was released today, I think that people would still be intrigued by its design. Kind of like the movie Yesterday. Had the Beatles never existed and now, and only now, people are starting to hear their songs, they would still be considered legendary. My point is, I don't think that this pen, regardless of when someone looks at it, will ever look vintage. I think that all around, the finishing on the pen is fantastic, from minor details like the rim of the cap being polished, to the almost near seamlessness of where the barrel ends and the blind cap begins, to the way it writes. I want to say that the making of this pen, I believe, has in the past and to this day still involved a huge amount of anal retentiveness and OCD procedures. That's all I have for the good. Moving on to the bad. Let's talk coin. This pen has an MSRP of $249 here in the US. With retailers, you can score this at a discounted price of $199. That is a reasonable price for a pen like this considering its pedigree. It's got an in-house made 14 karat gold nib and is a piston filler. Those two elements in any other pen often result in much higher prices. As a matter of fact, there are pens that have steel nibs that don't have piston fillers that cost more than our Lamy 2000. Now that's not to say that those pens aren't worth their cost but it certainly highlights the value of our Lamy 2000 for $199. Having said that, I do remember a time when it was about 25 or so dollars cheaper and at that price it was even a better value. However, I do understand the need to raise prices due to increased costs of living or whatever stuff costing more. I just hope that we won't see the price go above $200 anytime soon. This pen being a sub $200 option is part of its appeal and it makes it accessible to more people than it would if it goes over that $200 threshold. That's all I have for the bad. Moving on to the ugly. Those elements about the pen that should not be, but are. There is nothing really to gripe about when it comes to the quality, build, and design of this pen. Everything is well thought out and tried and true. But there is one little thing I wish they did to make the pen just a little bit more user friendly, and that is I wish they included instructions on how to remove the section safely for cleaning and piston regreasing. Not that it's very difficult to figure out, being it unscrews rather easily, but remember that little ring I spoke about that was responsible for the snap capping? Well, lose that ring and you can't cap your pen. 
and it's easy to lose if someone isn't paying attention. And I could definitely see a newer user accidentally losing the ring if they didn't know any better and remove the section while cleaning the pen. This is just something that I think they should do, but even if they didn't, I'm sure it's not really that big of a deal. I just thought that it was worth mentioning. That's all I have for the ugly. It's high noon, decision-making time. Should you or should you not pull the trigger on the Lamy 2000 fountain pen? This pen is a solid choice and a solid pen to have in your rundown of pens. It's not winning any awards for flair, and if you work in a place that requires a minimum number of flair as a part of your dress code, this won't make the cut. What it will do is it will be awesome and it will write. So unless you're looking for something that contributes to more flair, pull the trigger on this pen. As a matter of fact, even if you are looking for more flair, pull the trigger on this pen. It's a must have for any fountain pen enthusiast. And if you have a boss that is bugging you for not having enough flair, tell him where he should stick his flair. Anybody know what movie I'm referencing? That was my review of the Lamy 2000 fountain pen. Hope you found it helpful. Thanks again for watching. Love you guys. Be well, be safe.